What's up, Frenzyhead Nation? Coach Co. back with you for another wonderful episode of Sports Frenzy. Thank you. Good to be back, everyone. All right, this is, uh, we're going to be moving into, uh, first of all, I wanted to apologize, you guys, for um, not getting the recap show done done once again with the pay-per-views, WWE pay-per-views, it kind of gets a little crazy and messes things up a little bit, so um, didn't get it done. So I'm going to go through the recap for everybody uh, right now. Uh, my friends over there at Laura Havlin, you got your sheets done, so... You knew what was going on anyway. Keep up with everything. But uh, for those of us who didn't get through the scores, I will give you score updates in just a few minutes. Um, and we'll be moving into, this is Season 8, Episode 5 for you out there. Uh, but we'll do the recap here in just a second. Um, before I get into some other stuff, I let's see. Getting all my stuff around here. Um, jumping into the mailbag, we'll start the show off with some questions and answers that you guys said. Okay, so uh, let me start off with this. Uh, question number one. Thoughts on uh, the Michigan team right now? Thoughts on Michigan? Look at my background. It's all Michigan. I'm a Michigan fan. I bleed blue, folks. Yes, it's a tough loss to take losing t to MSU. But we still got a season to go on, and I still believe in this team. So, as I always say, go blue for life. That's where I'm at. Uh, question number two coming in from the Frenzy Nation. Do you think we should worry about Coach Harbaugh? Or should Coach Harbaugh be fired? Really? Really? You're not a true Michigan fan if you think that for one second. Never question the coach. I'm not worried about it. And no, I don't believe Coach Harbaugh should be fired. Are you kidding me right now? Give me a break. He's the coach, man. He's a great coach. He's done some wonderful things for Michigan already. Yes, we're losing some of the big rivalry games. Yes, we haven't got back to that point yet. I truly believe we can still achieve that and get to the powerhouse Michigan team that we once were under Bo Schembechler and other coaches. We'll get there. I still believe, so no. No, not even interested in firing a coach at all. Um, do you believe O'Corn should be benched as for another quarterback? I believe, in my opinion, the coach's decision stands. If Coach Harbaugh thinks that uh, O'Corn is still good enough to be our quarterback. I believe he's still good enough to be our quarterback. I don't question our coach, nor do I question who should be quarterbacking. Um, you know, there's a lot of rumors flying out there that, oh, let's see so-and-so. But at the same time, you guys were calling for O'Corn when Spate was playing bad, so people thought. Anyway, now that Spate's hurt, it's on O'Corn, and now you guys want O'Corn's head. Come on. True Michigan fans stand with their quarterback. And I'm true blue. Stand with the quarterback. Um, do you think the Michigan season can be salvaged? Yes, I do. I don't believe we're done by any shots. And I do believe we will take down Ohio this year. So, go blue. All right, that's enough questions for now, guys. Thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, I like to answer them when I can get to them, and it doesn't take too long. Uh, you can send your questions. If you have any questions, you can send them to my uh, email address at tim.co at lisd.us is one of the email addresses. Or you can uh, email or you can send your questions to... Um, it's on the on the YouTube page where the video goes. You can it's Coach Cole, Coach Cole one, no Coach sorry Coach Cole Sports Frenzy one is our YouTube page, or you can go on the Twitter feed and ask a question. Those get to me at some point too. It's at Sports Frenzy one. 
And uh, or you can leave them on the Facebook page if you remember the Facebook Nation as well. So thank you for the uh, questions, but the loyalty part of Michigan, I will always bleed blue. Go blue! All right. Uh, so from season or from episode four, I'm just going to run over our scores real quick for those of you that didn't get the scores in. Um, we have the Addison Panthers taking down Grass Lake, 42 to 12. Also makes the Panthers playoff eligible at this time. First time they've been playoff eligible since 2009, according to my uh, good friend, the professor, um, Jeff Plum. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, we got uh, Pickney over Adrian, unfortunately, 42 to 14. Uh, and Hillsdale gets an upset, in my opinion, over Blissfield, 28 to 20. Clinton slaughters Britton Deerfield, 41 to zero. And Whiteford destroys my uh, and my partner, my buddy over there. My friend, uh, my brother, Jason Boring, I didn't get to talk to him. I told you guys about this one. And when I told him that I was making the uh, this game my upset special of the week, he said, oh, man, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so the Sand Creek legend that I didn't talk to, when I made this game my coach's upset special of the week, I did not get my coach's upset special of the week as Whiteford destroys Sand Creek 53 to 14. A rare loss for the Hudson Tigers who fell to Ida 16 to 0. Wow. And that was your first three point bonus game last week. Uh Summerfield wipes out, crush, annihilates, destroys any other word you can think of in that kind of language. Um, Britain or Britain Madison, thirty-eight to zero. Wow. Uh, Tecumseh gets a win over Dexter, forty-nine to thirteen. Lenaway Christian gets it done against Colon, twenty-one to eight. Columbia Central, powerhouse in their way through. Against Erie Mason, 55-24. to And Onstead getting a win over Dundee, 21-20. to uh, Moving on to college football action. Sorry, I got an itchy eye tonight for some reason all of a sudden. Uh, we have uh, the, our second three-point bonus game. We're at... Michigan falls to MSU and loses the Paul Bunyan Trophy, fourteen to ten, in what was a rainy, very rainy, stormy night. I'm surprised at the end result that there was uh, no lightning or anything in the area, so they were able to play on. But this game was a mess. One of the heaviest rains, rain down games they've seen in a long, long time. Um. Disappointing loss if you're a Michigan fan. Western Michigan getting it done over Buffalo Bulls. 71-68. to And not one. Not two. Not three. Not even four. And nope, not five. Wasn't even six. They got it done in seven overtimes. Um... Ohio Dominican gets a win over uh, Hillsdale College, 41-27. to Folks, I got my first squeaker game. My first win under this new squeaker games for me. Um, Lakeland getting the win over Adrian, 47-40. to That's a touchdown win, so that's a small loss. It's the squeaker game of the week. It was the squeaker game of the week. And your last football game, we have the uh, Saints falling to Taylor, 38-7. to 
All right, we covered some, started to cover some postseason baseball action. Um, in these particular games, we've seen Houston Astros with the, our newly acquired Justin Verlander winning against Boston 8-2. to two. Then we had the Chicago Cubbies over Washington 3-0. to zero. The Dodgers, Rogers Dodgers, Dominating, dominated the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks seven to two. All right. Um, NHL action. Uh, Red Wings getting it done in this game against the Ottawa Senators in a shootout, two to one. And the. St. Louis Blues. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Didn't do that very good tonight. Getting the win over the Dallas Stars. 4-2. to two. Um, NASCAR Racing. Martin Trusix Jr. came in number one. Chase Elliott came in number two. And Kevin Harvick came in number three. If you chose one of those three guys, you got a point for NASCAR. All right. Last but not least for last week's sheets, we had our WWE pay-per-view, Hell in a Cell. Uh, not a great pay-per-view. It was okay, I guess, from what I'm seeing here. Um... I wasn't happy with most of these results, but we had our first match was Shane McMahon against Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens got the win with help from Sami Zayn, I guess. And in our women's championship match, Natalia gets herself disqualified against Charlotte Flair in a disqualification Unless it's no disqualification rules, guys, the title holder, Natalia, gets to keep her title because she cheated to win. So, And your final match, severely disappointed in this one, Jinder Mahal retains the title and it continues to be your champion against the one and only Shinsei Nakamura. Ridiculous that since he's left uh, NXT, that he's become somewhat of a beat around guy. Alright, guys. Again, once again, thanks for uh, bearing with me and uh, just doing the recap show now. Um, now we're going to jump into. As soon as I find my list here, there we go. Jump into this week's games. Let's get this sports frenzy fired up, folks. It's time to get our picks in for the Picks Edition. Season 5, or Season 8, Episode 5. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Coach Co. Games are up. Let's do this. Starting off like we have been. Continuing on with high school football. These games are all 7 p.m. kickoffs. Tonight, for those of you watching the tape show, Friday for those watching the live show right now. Our first game this week features... The four, whoops, four wins and three losses. Four wins, three losses. Hanover Horton. They are traveling to Panther Country 
to play the six wins and one loss, the Addison Panthers. Hmm. Do I believe in all the Panther hype right now? Has this team been fired up? Yes, they have. Are they going to start backpedaling because they've already made the playoffs? I hope not because I am choosing the Addison Panthers. Go Panthers. Oops, what did I do? I've got the Addison Panthers for the win this week. Next up, we have a school out of Ann Arbor. The three wins and four losses, Pioneer. They are traveling to the three wins and four losses. Get ready. Let's hear it for the Adrian Maples. Come on, Maple fans. Let's go. Let me hear you, Maple fans. Hey, Paulson's room. You're a little too quiet over there. Let's hear it for your school. I can't hear you. Louder. Little more. Louder. Let them hear you out in the hallway. Louder. That's right. And I've got Adrian for the win this week. Our next game features what was a heartbreaker last week for these guys. But they're still doing really good, which I, I have not seen uh, many good Blissfield teams. But we have uh, Blissfield with four wins and three losses. They're on the road this week. They're traveling to Erie Mason. Who Erie Mason Eagles who have one win and seven losses. I gotta believe that Blissfield can make a comeback this week. I'm going with the Blissfield Royals. For the Map Stones and the Roses. Alright. Another tough game ahead here. We have the seven wins. Zero losses. Whiteford. They are traveling to play my wife's old school. Clinton, who has five wins and two losses. <sighs> Wait for it is seven and zero. Oh. As much of a Clinton fan as I am. Whiteford at this point is tough. Clinton is a young team this year. You know what? Just because I'm crazy and insane and nuts this way. This is going to be the coach's upset special of the week. I've got Clinton coming in at home and getting the upset. Coaches. Upset special of the week. Go Clinton Redskins.
All right, next up. We have the, let's see, two wins and five losses. Uh, Whitmore Lake. And they are traveling to the one win and six losses, Britton Deerfield. What do you think, folks? What do you think, Nation? Is this the week that Britton Deerfield can get a win? Well, can they? Can they? <sighs> I don't think so. I'm going to go with Whitmore Lake for the win. Sorry, Britton Deerfield. You just don't seem to be a football school. Um... Uh, I got a typo here. Sorry, guys. This is my fault. As much as they'd like to be 7-1. and one. Hudson. Hudson is actually 6 wins and 1 loss. We'll get to that in just a second. Anyway, we have the Onstead Wildcats who have 5 wins and 2 losses. They're on the road this week, traveling to Hudson. They're playing the Tigers, who have six wins and one loss. I expect this could be a good game this week. But Hudson is going to be out for revenge after getting a loss last week. I'm thinking it's not a fluke. And I have my a shout out to my Hudson sideline reporter, Rich Hollowell, good, another good buddy of mine, who always frowns upon me not picking Hudson. <laughs> I've got the Hudson Tigers to upset. Well, not even upset, but just to win the game. Uh, and again, you guys, a lot of people, you know, I do have sometimes I have questions like, well, why do you put all these teams on here that are no good? Well, I like to give the shout-out to the local teams. That's why I do that. I try to cover all our local schools because that's what I like to do. It's one of the things I like to do. So, whether they're not great or not, they get a little bit of love on Sports Frenzy. So, our next game, we have the zero wins and seven losses. Madison. Who barely, from what I understand, barely even have a football team. They are traveling to the four wins and three losses. Marenzi's starting to struggle some here. The Marenzi Bulldogs. But I have a feeling the Bulldogs are going to make easy work of uh, Madison this week. All right, uh, next up, we have the two wins and five losses, the Fowlerville Gladiators. And they are on the road traveling to Tecumseh, who has four wins and three losses. I don't think it's going to be any problem this week. I'm giving the win to Tecumseh. All right. Up next, it's your first three, three-point bonus game. It's your first three three-point bonus game. If you know the words, sing along with me. It's your first three-point bonus game. Yeah. 
the tone of that song, if you haven't noticed, changes every week. It just depends on what my vocals can muster up and where I go with it. <laughs> and after that, I need a drink. This week's episode being brought to you by the Big Jug of Simply Lemonade. One of Coach Co's favorite drinks. It's just the basics and lemonade. That's all it is. No unnecessary stuff. None of the garbage you get in other drinks. Simply Lemonade. Coach Co, one of Coach Co's favorite drinks. I'm going to take a big slam of it right now to help with my uh, singing voice. <laughs> refreshing um it comes in regular lemonade there's a raspberry flavor and there's a really good flavor that i love blueberry all right um so we have on the road this week lenaway christian i say this every week but my good friend one of my former co-workers melissa morton her son plays for this team uh, they have five wins and two losses. And they are traveling to the Athen Indians. Who also have five wins and two losses. So that's why I thought this would make a pretty darn good three-point bonus game this week. And it does. And I'm going with Lenaway Christian for the win. Next game, we have the two wins and five losses. The Dundee Vikings traveling to the five wins and two losses. That's right. Let's give them a shout out. Let's hear it for the Columbia Central Eagles. I've got the Eagles, for those who don't know it, as an honorary member of the team. Got to go with the Eagles. Go Eagles! With this win, I believe they could earn a playoff berth this week as well. If, if I'm correct on that, even if I'm not correct on that, Coach Ronald, let me know. All right, uh, and this is our final... Yes, this is our final high school football game of the week. We have the five wins and two losses. Summerfield. They're coming into uh, Sand Creek to play the struggling Aggies, who have three wins and four losses. Again, you know, you don't talk to Coach Boring when I showed the Sand Creek legend, Jason Boring. Get his opinion on what he thinks the team can do this week against these guys. Summerfield's 5-2, and two, but they're coming to the home turf, Sand Creek. I know the record's not spectacular, but I'm giving it to the Aggies. Go Aggies! All right, going into your... Uh Saturday games, we have lots of college football action. These are just some of the games we cover on the show. Um, first up, the greatest college football team in the world. The four wins and one loss. Never give up on them. Go blue for life. The Michigan Wolverines. They'll be heading down to Indiana. To play the three wins and two losses. 
the Indiana Hoosiers. This game kicks off at 12 p.m., and you can watch it on ABC. Oh, an ABC game this week. Note that, it's on ABC. You know who I got. Go Blue! Go Blue! Go, go, go Blue! Hail to the victors! Hail, hail to Michigan, the leaders and the best! Go Blue! And next up, we have a MAC conference game for you guys. We have the three wins and three losses. The Akron Zips. And they are traveling to the four wins and two losses. That's right. Your Western Michigan Broncos. They have four wins, two losses. And they uh, this game kicks off at 3.30 p.m. on CBS Sports. So that's cool. I'm going to get two good games in this week to watch. Because I believe I have CBS Sports. And speaking of good games, I can't do it. <laughs> I was going to be not kind of cruel about it and going, speaking of good games, uh, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say because it would be cruel and mean and I'm trying to be a nicer person because we do actually have a pretty decent amount of MSU fans who uh, are a part of the nation and enjoy the show, so... I, I'm trying to be nicer these days, and, you know, most of them are, well, I can't say most of them, all of them have been nice to me, so but I would like to think that everybody that this does happen to go to this school are uh, friends of mine, so, <laughs> yep, friends or family. <laughs> so we have, that's why this game's on here, because I know there's a bunch of you out there who enjoy MSU football. MSU have four wins and one loss. They are traveling to Minnesota, the new Roll Your Boat, because they bought that and bought it for like fifty thousand bucks, paid off Western Michigan to use Roll the Boat. PJ Fleck. Minnesota team. Three wins, two losses. Oh, I forgot to mention this is your squeaker game of the week. Squeaker game of the week. Uh, why did I choose a squeaker game of the week? I think this is going to be a close team. you got two teams that both believe in themselves. And so I figure it's going to be a close game. All right. Moving right along. Oh, what? What? I didn't pick? Yeah, that's right. I don't like either one of these teams. I'm not picking this game. <laughs> I'll call it a squeaker game of the week, but I'm not picking it. It's out for me. Out. All right. Next up, we have the uh, struggling Adrian Bulldogs. They have two wins and three losses. They're on the road this week. Traveling to uh, Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. I can mention this, though. I'm jumping back up to the MSU-Minnesota game. This game will be... This is your night game. This game will be on the Big Ten Network at 8 p.m. So...
There you go. Uh, back to the Adrian game, uh, Adrian College game. Adrian Bulldogs have two wins and three losses. And they are traveling to Hope College, who has four wins and one loss. This is a 6 p.m. kickoff. And sorry, Adrian College, but your season, not real good. I'm going to have to go with Hope. Next up, we have uh, the St. Francis Cougars. They have six wins and zero losses. They're on the road this week. Traveling to, guys are battling back some, the four wins and two losses. Sienna Heights. This game has a 7 p.m. kickoff. Saints are 4 and 2. Don't really know anything about St. Francis other than the fact that they're 6 and 0. Oh. Do you know I already went against one home college team? I'll go with the Saints, see if they can pull off the win. I'm not convinced they can, but I'm going to say they can. Excuse me. All right, we have one final hockey game this week. We have the five wins and one loss, Finley. The Finley Oilers. They are traveling to Hillsdale, who have been struggling a little bit this year as well. They have three wins and one or three wins and three losses. This game kicks off at 1 p.m. I've got to go with Adrian College. All right. Uh, I need to do. I forgot. I, you know, I told you guys when I go live, I would have hockey scores for you for the uh, NHL here, so game I got they don't have a score for. Uh Joe standings. Give me just a second here as I use my uh, my Kindle Fire to queue up my uh, NHL standings and scores here so I can get you up to date on the Red Wings. I haven't been able to catch or watch a lot of their games yet. Um, but they I can tell you this, they are on the road this week. Hmm. Sorry, guys, it's taking a little longer than I wanted it to. I 
Or I could have just done this before the show. That would have even been better. All right. First up. Okay. Sorry about the delay there. My tablet's running a little slow tonight, but I do have what I needed right here. So, all right. Uh, we have the three wins and three losses. Or, I'm sorry, three wins, two losses. Your Detroit Red Wings. Let's go, Red Wings. Let's go, Red Wings. Let's go, Red Wings. Red Wings battling back this season in their new arena. It's time to restart, re-over, and get things done. Uh, but they're on the road this week against, I believe these guys are a brand new team. The Las Vegas Golden Knights, who have three wins and three losses. This game will be, is a late game, it'll be on Fox Sports Detroit Friday night at 10.30. I've got the Red Wings. Let's go Red Wings! Let's go Red Wings! Alright, we're moving into some minor league hockey. And of course we would be covering the Red Wings affiliated team. Your defending champions, the Grand Rapid Griffins! The Griffins have, at this point, one win and one loss. And they are on the road this week against the Barracudas, who have two wins and one loss. Um, this game is on at 10 p.m. Friday. So if you're not if you're watching the Red Wings, you could listen to the Griffins on uh, it is on the iHeartRadio app 107.5 WBBL, I believe is the Griffins affiliated radio station. Um, I, I usually listen to it on the iHeartRadio app. Or you can also pull up the um, you could just go in there and type um, Grand Rapid Griffins, and it'll give you a list of audio where you can uh, check them out at. I do believe there's a website, there's a minor league hockey website that you can sign up for and pay for games, and you can watch their games, I do believe, if I remember correctly. And while we're at it, this is your other... Three points. Three points. It's your other three point bonus game. Never too old to rock. Anyway, I've got the Grand Rapid Griffins. For the win. Shall we do it? Let's go, Griffins. Let's go, Griffins. Let's go, Griffins. Get the win. 
All right, our final hockey game of the week. Uh, this uh, shows the walleye season just kicking off from what I was reading on the schedule there. So the walleye have zero wins and zero losses. To your walleye. They're on the road this week playing the Quad City Mallards. Who also have zero wins and zero losses. This game, the puck drops at 8.05. I've got the Grand Rapid Griffins. All right, we're moving into NASCAR action, folks, and I'm going to pull up some information. This race is one of the big races this week. It's in Talladega. That is considered one of their um, big races. And again, I'm no racing pro. You know, I still, uh, we used to make a mockery of racing when I was, when Sports Frenzy was, we did Sports Frenzy before. So, but uh, over the years, we've gotten better at it and covered it a little better and uh, tried to learn a little more about it. Uh, NASCAR, let's see. You want to see the standings. NASCAR standings 2017. Let's go there. All right, so uh, we have the 2017 Monster NASCAR standings. Um, so I'll give you the top 10 drivers right now. Um, and their points and their wins for you guys. So we have Martin Truzix Jr., 3,106 points, 6 wins. Kyle Larson, number 2, 3,700, I'm sorry, 3,072 points, 4 wins under his belt. Uh, Kevin Harvick in 3rd has 3,600, gosh darn it, I keep messing that up, 3,069 uh, points, one win. Chase Elliott has 3,059 points in fourth place, and he has absolutely no wins under his belt. Danny Hamlin is number five. He has 3,056 points, two wins under his belt. Kyle Busch is number six. He has 3,055 points and three wins under his, or four wins under his belt, sorry. Jimmy Johnson, number seven, has 3,051 points and three wins under his belt. Jamie McMurray, in eighth, has 3,044 points with zero wins under his belt. Ninth, we have Matt Kenseth. With 3,043 points and zero wins under his belt. And number 10, Brad Kulowski. 3,042 points and two wins under his belt. Um, other mentionable names in the list. Kurt Busch is at 16th. Joey Logano with a terrible season this year. Only 752 points and one win. Um, so what does all this mean? Well, as the races are winding down, these points become important. and More important than the actual... Not really more important than the actual wins. But uh one of these guys will be crowned the champion at the end of the season by points too so uh Martin Truzix Jr taking a pretty demanding lead right now in the uh in the races so he could be your grand Tro trophy winner this year uh let's see i said the race was at Talladega this week um
Let's see what we can get on some playoff results here for these guys. Okay, the uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, according to uh, NBC, or I'm sorry, NBC, CBSSports.com, uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads back to Talladega Speedway. Uh, it is the second race in the playoffs, playoffs, round of 12. So this is the second of 12 races. Um, let's see. All right, so this is the... This is officially called the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Alabama 500. It's at the Talladega Super Speedway. Uh, this is a Sunday race, October 15th, 2 p.m. It's 188 laps. Um, you can watch it on NBC Sports. Your top racers that have won... In Talladega, Brad Kowalski has four wins. Jimmy Johnson, two wins. Uh, Jamie McMurray, two wins. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., one win. Danny Hamlin, one win. Kevin Harvick, one win. And Kyle Busch. So, best out of 12 races. It's still open to anybody at this point. And I... We'll be going with my uh, driver that I've been going with for quite a long time now. I've got Kyle Busch for the win. All right, guys. So that is your picks this week. All we have for the picks portion of the show. But I do have some uh, news for you guys here. News off the um, Frenzy page. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Florida Gators uh, football. They're wearing skinned, yeah, uh, alligator skin uniforms. Uh, they're not actually alligator skin uniforms, but they look like alligator skin uniforms. Uh, let me see if I can find those for you to see real quick, because not everybody has the Sports Frenzy page. I didn't like them. I think they look ridiculous. Florida Gators Gator Oops. Gator uniforms. These things are the worst, if you can see that, worst things I've ever seen. I, there's a lot of glare there. Let me see if I can turn this up if it makes any difference. There we go. Focus on the picture. Uh, yeah, I would not want to be seen in this. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, Florida Gators wearing uh, gator skin colored uniforms for this week's game. Who knows? It might be a decent distraction, I guess, to the other teams. <laughs> the other team. Um, in other news, a former Celtic, I, Isaiah Thomas, uh, is speaking out about his trade. He said he never wanted to leave the team. He wanted to uh, stay a Celtic. And he blames Danny Ainge for the move. And, well, of course it's Danny Ainge because he's the president of operations there. Um, 
But he says, I'll always be a Celtic fan no matter where I end up being. And I blame, I don't know if I'll ever talk to Danny Ainge again because Danny Ainge knew my history, knew me, and yet he went and still traded me off like this. So he's not super excited about being moved. All right, our next topic of discussion this week, folks. Squid or not to squid at Little Caesar Arena. Apparently, there's some issues going on. Now, I know we have PETA involved. PETA was saying, you know what? We don't want people throwing squids out on the stadium this year on the the new uh, floor. So um, we'll give you these rubber thingies that look like squids because squids have... Squids have lives, too. Well, hello. They're not buying live squids and throwing them on the stadium floor. I think the squid are already dead. They're buying them from, like, the fish shop or something, I'm assuming. But anyway, a guy got in trouble for throwing a squid out at Little Caesars Arena. Apparently, the new thing to do is you should be throwing pizza out there, apparently. It's Little Caesars Arena, so you don't want to throw a squid out there anymore. Buy a $5 pizza. That way you're giving money to Little Caesar. Throw that out there. They don't want to see squid out there because the guy who did this... Now, I've seen some um, controversy stories on this. He threw out a squid and he got kicked out of the game. And uh, one story said he was banned for life. Another story says that's not true. So there's conflicting stories in this, and I still don't have a true answer on it. I don't think they want the publicity for this one, folks. It's been a Red Wings tradition for many, many years to throw a squid out on the uh, playground. Squid out on the ice at some point. They've always, it's happened. It's always been there. And now they're trying to take that away from what some people are saying. And this fan could possibly be banned for life. I know he was from Canada, so your thoughts on that. Post your thoughts. You know what? Maybe I'll try and post a uh, poll question up on Sports Frenzy about that this week if I can get to it in time. Um, Next up, to some WWE uh, wrestling-related story, AJ Styles commenting on the reformed S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, he says him and the club could easily beat down the shield. Your thoughts on that, Nation? Um, for uh, going back to some former Michigan or Michigan news, former Michigan man Trey Burke signs with uh, the Knicks, and he'll be rejoining his former teammate from Michigan, Tim Hardaway Jr. So uh, congratulations to him, even though I'm not a Knicks fan at all. Uh, Oh, shocker of the week. The U.S. soccer team fails to qualify after controversial goal. Yeah, uh, I guess it came down to a goal that they thought went in, and apparently it didn't after review. So the U.S. soccer team, for the first time in a long time, are done. They did not qualify this year. It's kind of a bummer. And the Red Sox have fired manager John Farrell. Uh, For those of you out there thinking, well, will he get a chance to interview for the Detroit Tigers? No. Tigers have already said no. He's not going to be one of the nominations. Uh, There was a good article on the Sports Frenzy page about um, who the uh, Tigers are looking for. Uh, they interviewed three of um, of uh, Brad's uh, former staff now, and um, they got and they got like four outside guys they're looking at. They haven't really said who they are yet, um, but they hope to have a new hired somebody hired before either before the end of the World Series. Or shortly after the World Series is what I'm hearing right now. And our last news of the week, for those who didn't know already, uh, Michigan quarterback Wilton Spate 
is out for the season. He has at least three broken vertebrae, um, which that's not good. That could be a career-ending injury right there. So uh, uh, we wish Wilton nothing but the best and a speedy recovery. And uh, hopefully he'll still be okay. The big thing we have to remember about these guys, whether you like them or not, they're young men who have a long life ahead of them yet. So, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel about them. I hope he, uh, so I hope you get everything works out and you heal up fast, Wilton. Take care of yourself, buddy. Well, that's all I have for you this week, guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Sports Friends and Recap Show should go off as planned on regular time, regular schedule. I uh, just want to continue to thank everybody for your love and support, um, your emails and writing in and saying hello and commenting on things. Awesome. Keep up the great work, Nation. I love you guys very much. Looks like it's going to be a good night. I'm believing it's going to be a good night for games, good weekend for games. So no matter what you like to do, get out there and enjoy the weather or enjoy some football or some hockey or whatever you want to do. Enjoy it. I'm the coach. Be blessed, everyone. And we will see each other again sooner than later. Take care and go blue for life.